G'day there Ambassador Holix, welcome to another Spotlight ETF review. Today we'll be looking at VAE, which is a Vanguard FTSE Asia ETF. Uh, that one obviously is excluding Japan uh, and obviously Australia and New Zealand. So Asia has been one of the best regions in uh, getting out of COVID-19 or you know getting it under control anyway that's obviously helping uh, get their economies back on track uh, quicker than uh, the parts of the world over the long term i think asia could be a region that delivers good economic growth which should be helpful to the underlying businesses and if you're invested in asia and those businesses that'll be mighty helpful to you as well uh, the ETF provides low cost exposure to 1,439 securities listed in Asia. If you want exposure to companies such as Taiwan Semiconductors, Tencent Holdings, Alibaba uh, and Samsung, I suggest you hang around and um, take in some more information regarding VAE. Hey there, Investor Alex, this is Scott. Crack the Sky Bay Investing will be giving you up-to-date investing news and content so that you can navigate the markets wherever you are. My mission here at Crack the Sky is to give you the knowledge and the confidence to take control of your personal finances, expand your investment horizons, and crack your financial sky. So don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up. And also subscribe, it helps get the message out there, it helps pump the uh, algorithm for YouTube. Um, yeah, just in general, it sort of uh, gives me a bit more motivation as well to keep doing these little um, reviews for you guys. Thanks. Okay, so let's take a look at Vanguard, which is uh, VAE, the Vanguard FTSE Asia X Japan Shares Index ETF. Uh, investment objective here is to track the index, um, return, returns the index of the FTSE Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific X Japan Australia New Zealand index um, with net dividends reinvested in Australian dollars before considering all the fees and expenses and all the rest of it. So the ETF provides low cost exposure to securities listed in Asian countries excluding as we just mentioned japan australia and new zealand the etf is exposed to fluctuation fluctuating values in foreign currencies as they will not be any hedging of foreign currencies in the australian dollar uh, y factor um, competitive long-term performance vanguard's investment approach provides investors with an efficient way to catch a long-term market performance, obviously with these ETFs, we get some diversification. The fund invests in a diversified portfolio of securities, which means the fund is less exposed to the performance fluctuations of individual securities. As always, uh, we like uh, low cost investing. Uh, the fund has low ongoing fees as uh, Vanguard strive to minimize the cost of managing and operating the fund. So Vanguard is definitely one of the cheaper fund managers around or ETF managers around. Definitely a company to uh, take a closer look at in general. Okay, so at the time of my research, we had a net asset value per share of $77.97 trading above that at $78.76 market cap just over $350 million management cost per annum of uh, 0.4 of a percent you have a distribution quarterly January April July October which is nice some money in your pocket dividend yield is relatively low uh, but, but these things are looking for high growth anyway so 1.83% this one might be suitable for buy and hold investors seeking long-term capital growth, international diversification, and um, someone who has higher tolerance for risk. Uh, obviously, it's a, um, that risk is associated with uh, developing Asian countries. 
Uh, the ETF has over 1,439 holdings, so it's definitely well diversified. Uh, your biggest holdings are Alibaba, Tencent, Taiwan Semiconductors, Samsung, AIA, uh, that one there I can't really pronounce, me thing, depending on how you say that anyway, Reliance Industries, JD.com, China Construction Bank, and Ping An Insurance. Um, we will see the rest of those um, on the next slide. Okay, as I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, we've got um, the top holdings here, looking at Taiwan Semiconductor, Tencent, Alibaba, Samsung, and AIA. Uh, Performance-wise, it hasn't done uh, too bad. It's actually done quite well. Uh, the ETF has delivered annual returns per annum of um, just under 12%, so 11.9% since inception in December 2015, uh, which has included issues like trade wars as well as COVID-19, so it's done pretty well. Um, technology makes up 32%, China makes up 40 Taiwan makes up 16%, so you can add those together depending on what you think. Uh, Korea, uh, Korea makes up 14.9%, India makes up 11.1%, and Hong Kong is 8.5%. Um, according to Vanguard, it has a PE of roughly 17.8%, which is not extremely high, but it's kind of pushing the higher side. Uh, you also have a um, earnings growth rate of 12%. 0.3% and a return on equity ratio of 14.4%. So not too bad there. Um, yeah, definitely, I think one one to have a look at um, just for the sheer fact that it's performed so well over over the short term. But as with all these things, it's it's really hard to tell what's going to happen in the long term. But I think one to have a look at just um, just for the sheer fact that it's performed so well, one to have a, a closer look at. And I think it can um, definitely add value to your portfolio. Are you interested in learning more about personal finance and investing in the markets? If you are, then smash the like here on the left hand side and caress the subscribe button on the right hand side because Crack the Sky and Value Investing will be giving you up to date investing news and content so you can navigate the markets wherever you are, expand your investment horizon, and crack your financial sky. Thanks, guys. See you later.